Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. If you're a regular listener to the show, we know we talk about the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And so Garrett, several months ago, became the, uh, the, the wise old sage that he is and said, why don't we do one, one episode, one show for each of the seven deadly sins? And we did alcohol, we did meat, and today we're going to do sugar. Now, sugar is a biggie because I believe that sugar is the most abused drug in the world. More people are hooked on sugar than just about anything else. Now, some people might argue and say it's coffee, but guess what? That's one of the seven deadly sins, too. So we're going to get to that co coming up. We'll, we're going to do a, like an episode just on coffee, too. And it's always interesting because I think, well, how much information is there going to be on one of the seven deadly sins? And there is so much information uh, that we, we never cover everything that we need to. But sugar is a tough one because it's everywhere and it's legal. And so many of you, myself included, when you have some sugar are just hooked and you can't stop eating it. Now, some people come to the realization that they're eating too much and then they have to get themselves off it. But a lot of people just live their lives. And when I say sugar, I'm not just talking about white table sugar. How about breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, soda? You put it in your coffee, you put it in your tea, you put it in your iced tea. It's everywhere. And sugar is a biggie because it stimulates a part of the brain, you've heard me say this before, called the nucleus acubens. I'm gonna go a little more into details about that today. And when it stimulates the nucleus acubens, you get high. And when you get high, you want more. And so sugar is a tricky, uh, a tricky thing because you don't realize it because it's, it's there, and especially around holidays. I mean, think about a holiday. Every holiday that you've ever uh, experienced, uh, celebrated, whether it's uh, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, your birthday, Christmas, Halloween, What's it based around? Sugar. Everything is based around sugar. And I don't get it because that's so bad for you. And that's why so many people get sick when they go on vacation. They come home for vacation, they're sick. Why? Well, I celebrate it. It was a treat. And you'll see it happen, especially around, in, around the, um, as Halloween rolls around. People will get sick the week after Halloween. Then they'll start to get a little better. And then Thanksgiving comes along. Then everybody gets sick again the week after Thanksgiving. And then everybody has Christmas parties. So you're sick right before Christmas. Everybody's rotten on Christmas, has a miserable time. Then New Year's comes around. They get drunk. That's an alcohol. Alcohol is a sugar. And then finally around somewhere around the, the middle, the, the late um, uh, January, the third or fourth week of January, people start to almost reboot themselves. But now more than ever, I want you to stay away from no sugars. And is it hard? Yeah. But if it's a problem, just blame it on me. Patients say all the time, you know, well, well Dr. Joe, my doctor, he's a jerk. He won't let me do these things. Because people say, oh, just have a bite of cake. Oh, just have some soda. Try this drink. Oh, my gosh. You just got to try these cookies that I made. No, don't fall for it. Excess sugar is, is the primary factor in countless chronic disease states. Excess amount of stealth sugar, the hidden sugar, in processed food has quite literally become the backbone that supports America's disease care business. It's not a health care business. It's a disease care business. And here's the thing. If you gave up sugar, you, the collective you, the entire universe, we wouldn't have this healthcare crisis everybody's talking about. Because it's not that we have a lack of doctors. It's not that your insurance, well, your rates are too high. It's that you're creating this business. You're doing things that are making you get sick, and sugar is a biggie. And it's the driving force behind this healthcare industry. So there's really no benefit to, like, let's say an insurance company gets you to quit sugar because they say, oh, we want to do health programs, we want to do wellness programs. But in reality, uh, you got to be sick or else the insurance companies go out of business. So excessive amounts of this stealth sugar is bad. Now, according to a research in, uh, study, it was in 2013 called Sugar Consumption at a Crossroads. Up to 40% of the U.S. healthcare expenditures are for diseases directly related to the overconsumption of sugar. 40% of the diseases that we treat in the United States are due to excess consumption of sugar. And that's heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, and then, of course, the things that follow those diseases, all going back to sugar. Major problem with processed food is when you look at the label, it's confusing. How many people get confused? I get confused. I know how to read these things, and it can be confusing. Even foods that are typically healthy can contain shocking amounts of added sugar or fructose in the form of high fructose corn syrup. And when I give live lectures, I'll ask this. Hey, where do you find high fructose corn syrup? And the answer unanimously is everywhere. It's in so many different foods right now because it's cheaper than regular sugar and it's sweeter than regular sugar. So if I'm a manufacturer and I have, a pro I have something that I can add to my product that's going to be more addicting and cheaper for me to put in there, what am I going to put in there? Absolutely, high fructose corn syrup. It's banned in a lot of countries. 
And the reason it's banned is many times it's made, well, I think all the time, it's made with genetically modified corn or genetically modified uh, other foods. And a lot of countries have banned genetically modified foods. So if you go to other countries, you're not going to find the food you see in the United States. About 80% of the foods you can find in a United States grocery store, you're not going to find in other countries. It's an interesting fact there because of the chemicals that we're adding to our foods. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. If you have any questions, healthcare questions, anything, I'm going to open the lines early today. Not just about sugar. Any healthcare questions, give us a call. The number here is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. Our website, over 1,000 hours of podcast, lots of good information. DrJoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Call us with your health care questions, 844 Naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So, talking today about sugar. Hot topic, obviously, because so many people eat sugar, not every day, every meal. And it's really hard to avoid it. Now, there's, you know, better types of sugar than others, and we're going to talk about that and how they're hidden. A lot of times it's a hidden word that you're seeing. You don't even know that that's sugar, and it's sugar. <laughs> but it's different forms of sugar. Ultimately, sugars have to be broken down into glucose. And glucose is the type of sugar that your body uses as fuel. But so many times we add fructose to our foods, and that's where you see high fructose corn syrup. Clinical trials have shown that if you consume high fructose corn syrup, it tends to lead to development of higher risk of cardiovascular disease within as little as two weeks. So just eating high fructose corn syrup every day, like a can of soda, for example, increase your risk of heart disease within two weeks. So if I had to pick the worst of all the sugars, it's probably going to be the fructose. Now, it's important to distinguish between the natural food-based sugars and added sugars. So for example, if you take a small serving cup of plain yogurt, it has about seven grams of sugar in the form of lactose, and that's a sugar found in dairy. Now, a lot of people have issues. I would say all people have issues with this because we don't produce an enzyme called lactase. Lactase is the enzyme, ASE means enzyme, OSE means sugar. The lactase breaks down lactose. Now, some people have a harder time breaking down the lactose than others, and so they would be considered lactose intolerant. I believe everyone is lactose intolerant to some, some degree, but people that have more severe issues, now we have milk that's lactose-free. Well, folks, if you have to alter it that much to make it edible, it may not be the thing you want to do. Because not only is it the lactose that's a problem in milk, and we've got dairy coming up as one of our shows, uh, but there's a, a casein, which is an, a protein that's found in milk. And you need an enzyme called renin to break down the casein. And when you're an infant, all babies, all mammals, uh, have enzymes that can break down um, the, the casein. As we get older... We don't produce the renin to break down the casein. In fact, if you eat cheese, how many people eat cheese? A lot of you eat cheese. I know you do. You think, well, I don't eat animal products, but I eat cheese. I'm vegetarian. I'm not vegan. Many times, the way they make the cheese is they take something called rennet to break down the casein to make the cheese coagulate. Well, rennet we get from baby cow's stomachs. We scrape the inside of a baby cow's stomach to get the rennet to add to the uh, milk to break down the casein to make the cheese. So gross factor, very high on that. Um, and also then you are eating an animal product, not just an uh, animal excrement, but you're eating an actual animal product there. So not a good idea if you're going to you know, try to fool yourself and think, I'm not eating animal products, but milk is okay. Well, cheese. And here's the thing with cheese. Just like with sugar, people get hooked on cheese. They say, I can't give up my cheese, Dr. Joe. I can give up my anything, but I can give up the, the, the meat and the dairy and the, the milk, the meat and the, the, the soda and the coffee and the artificial sweeteners. I can't give up the cheese. Well, why not? Why can't you just give up milk? But you, well, you can give up milk, but you can't give up cheese because we concentrate something called the casomorphines. Casomorphines are found in dairy. And when we take the water out, what's left is what we make cheese out of it. And that's where the casomorphines are concentrated. So you're getting high just like you get high in sugar when you eat cheese. So if you think you could just give up the cheese, it's not the flavor of the cheese you love, it's the casomorphine probably that's getting you high. So if you have a cup of dairy, uh, a cup of yogurt, that's where I was, seven grams of sugar. Now you add a fruit flavored yogurt. That contains about 19 grams of sugar, 12 grams of added sugar. So that's like taking a small uh, a yogurt and adding some frosted flakes to it, adding a bowl of frosted flakes to it. That's about how much sugar is in there. So when you eat your yogurt every morning, you think you're doing something good, you're not. You're eating a ton of sugar, and a lot of that sugar is going to be fructose. Now, some people say, well, I want to go on a low-fat diet. Now, 
here's the thing. People respond differently to different diets. I can't eat a lot of fat. If I eat a lot of fat, I put on weight very quickly. And the number one question I get from patients is how do I lose weight when it comes to, to nutrition? The number two question I get is how do I gain weight? We did a live event the other day, and one of the cameramen raised his hand behind the camera and said, Dr. Joe, I need to gain weight. So I said, eat more fatty foods like nuts and avocados. So people, if we cut out the fat, like if I cut out fat, I'll lose weight. If I eat too much fat, I'll gain weight. But when we came out with this low-fat craze, what we did is we took the fat out of a lot of foods and added sugar to it. Now, sugar is a primary driver, we said, of a lot of diseases in cr that have chronic inflammation, things like obesity, diabetes, heart disease. So by removing the fat from the food and adding the sugar, we created a lot of problems. And a lot of the things, you, like we said, you're going to find are added uh, in the United States. You're not going to find in other countries because they're banned. Things like glyphosate, things like genetically modified food, trans fats. So I think the rest of the world is smarter than us when it comes to a lot of their diet. Now, you can get similar products. Like you can get a can of soda, a brand name in the United States, brand name in, let's say, Europe. But it's going to be sweetened with sugar, not high fructose corn syrup because genetically modified foods. And the other thing too is sugar, white table sugar, 50% fructose, 50% glucose. Glucose is the fuel your body can use right away. Fructose has to be converted into glucose. And in the process, it creates something called uric acid. Now uric acid can get in your joints and it hurts. Now as a chiropractor and a pain management expert, all my doctors, our concern is get you out of pain and get you well. So if you come to see us, and I hope you do, by the way, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, any type of pain issue, chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for pain, back pain, anywhere available. Most effective, least expensive. Why wouldn't you be doing that as your primary portal of entry? I don't understand it. So if you want to get pain relief, I would say I try chiropractic first. And if it doesn't work, we can always go up. But let's start low. It's less expensive, less invasive, and very more effective. Absolute no-brainer when it comes to neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches. I can't imagine anyone going anywhere else. And a lot of doctors, they go to the neurosurgeon, they go to vascular surgeon, they go to the orthos, and they send them to us anyway. Say, listen, this, we can't operate on this guy. Go ahead and do your thing, Joe. And if you can fix him, great. If not, then send him back to us. Almost 100% of the time, we never have to send them back again. So for pain, it's wonderful. But if we're giving you the best chiropractic treatment in the world, and I think we do, and you're doing things like sugar, a fructose, it's converting into uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Uric acid prevents the body from producing something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. It's a vasodilator. And when it opens up the blood vessels, it increases circulation. And a lot of people, when they have high blood pressure, they'll take things like Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support, along with Dr. Joe's super greens and Dr. Joe's essential source to get the nutrients the body needs. And in many cases, that's part of a plan to help lower the blood pressure. Works great. So you're eating a lot of fructose. Fruct fructose creates uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide production. And now you start getting high blood pressure. And they say, well, take the high blood pressure medication, cut out your salt, but nobody ever talks about cutting out the sugar, which is probably just as bad, if not worse, than the salt because it's preventing nitric oxide production. So if you're doing fructose, bad for you. And it gets into joints and it hurts. So table sugar, 50% glucose, 50% fructose. High fructose corn syrup is only 55% fructose. It's almost the same as white table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, but it's so much sweeter and cheaper to make that we use it. And then people say, well, Dr. Joe, I don't do any of those. I use the natural thing called agave nectar because agave nectar is healthy. It's natural. Agave nectar is 85% fructose. It is far worse than high fructose corn syrup. So even though it's touted as a health food, don't buy into it. Folks, got to go to break. If you have any healthcare questions, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. We've got a couple of calls already. Uh, our website, over 1,000 hours of podcast, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. You can make an appointment right online, but better yet, call us. Call 844-44-DR-JOE. During business hours, go right to the office. We'll get you set up as soon as possible. Talk. Hey, folks, glad you could join us. Dr. Joe here talking about sugar today. Boy, it's a biggie. Boy, Ronnie, our, our news person is limping past us. I wonder what's up with her. So she just, I just sort of walked past the window. What are you doing, Ronnie? You need a chiropractor? <laughs> Maybe we can help you. I don't know. <laughs> Poor Ronnie. She heard us, I guess. So she coming in to join us? I guess she's coming in. I think she is. What, what's going on with you? Uh, 
Um, I think I have muscle spasms, and uh-huh. they've been um, they've been pretty bad the last few days, so I can't really straighten up and walk upright as you see very I, well. I know somebody might be able to help that. Really? Bald guy, yeah, kind of going bald, yeah. Italian. Kind of going bald. Kind of going bald. You don't see that because you're nice short. New, you can't, right, I can't see that. can't see the top of my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you if you have something in your nose, though. That's true. It, so, yeah. is, it is the, the okay? advantage of being 4'11". We're good today? Nose is okay? Yeah, you look nose great. Good. Thank you. Thank All you. clear. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. But yeah, I would love to talk with you after uh, the show. Maybe if after you the show, I'll have come. Some tips. I'll yeah. come visit it's you. It's really good. hard. Okay. We don't. We Thank don't. Thank God like, for painkillers. Yes, we, we we love our Ronnie. We don't like seeing Ronnie sad. So anyway, so talking about sugar, and I know Ronnie never does sugar because she's amazing. Oh, we got to help her with the door. The doors here in the studio weigh like eight hundred pounds each, and poor Ronnie can't even open it. So, all right. So we're talking about sugar today and how dangerous sugar is, and one of the things sugar can do is cause inflammation, which certainly could be contributing. Uh, to Ronnie's uh, back spasms. Uh, I don't think it's the cause of it, but it sure be, can be contributing to it. And that's the thing we put together a treatment plan for our patients is it usually isn't a thing. People send me emails all the time. Dr. Joe, can your super greens and essential source cure headaches or uh, you know, uh, blindness or whatever? You can, ne- there's never a thing that cures anything. You got to put the protocol together. And the protocol is a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. And a lot of you drink soda every day. And I know, as soon as I take some calls, I'm going to tell you why it's so hard to give up the soda. And here's a little clue. It's not the sugar. Start taking some calls. May, how can we make your day better? Okay, this is in reference to the cheese and the milk. Sure. Is it okay to use eat goat cheese, goat milk? And did I not see a pea milk? What would be a good milk to use in my smoothie? Okay, almond milk or coconut milk, uh, hemp milk, oat milk. Those are the kinds I use. Uh, goat okay. milk is still going to be tough because we don't have the enzymes to break down goat milk. Goats have those enzymes. Goats don't have mm-hmm. the enzymes to break down human milk. It's it's it, The enzymes are specific to the species of mammal that's producing the milk. So uh, goat milk is probably maybe a little easier than cow milk. But the problem is this. If you're in Georgia especially – it has to be pasteurized by law if it's for human oh, right. consumption. If it's for animal consumption, it doesn't, but for human consumption. And when you pasteurize it, you coagulate a lot of the proteins and bind them together, which makes it a lot harder to digest. So I would rather see you do the goat milk, the almond milk, uh, the hemp milk, uh, and those way over any, any any type of animal milk. And I think you'll feel a lot okay. better if you do it too. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thanks, May. Appreciate it. Folks, if you have a healthcare question like me, did 844 44 Dr. Joe, 844 44 D R J O E. Ross, how can you make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, thanks for talking my call. How are you, sir? I am so happy you called. Why don't you need to shut hey, off man. I think you need to lower your radio, Ross. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Dr. Joe, I got a doozy for you. Uh, Remember, well, you probably don't. You probably get so many questions. Last year we spoke, and I was asking you, would you do a show on the dogs and stuff like that, on on people, pets, specifically dogs, because I had a dog. Uh And I got a question about my dog, if you can take a shot at it for me, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Dr. Joe, my dog, I took him to the vet this morning, Uh and they said his stomach was turned. And now he had to have an operation because his stomach is kind of sort of turned around. Sure. And I just want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, no, that can happen. Absolutely. It happens with uh, horses, too. The, the colon can get twisted. And when it gets twisted, um, I've never adjusted a, a, an animal's stomach before, aside from a human. So I don't know if I can do that. I can certainly try it. Okay. Um, but, yeah, if it, gets, if it gets contorted like that, sometimes you do have to go in there and have the surgery. People have it sometimes, too. And they have to have surgery as well. But I'm sure the vet was right when he, when he said it, and he probably did need the surgery. So, Good deal. Thank right. you so much, Dr. Joe. Thanks, Ross. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Folks, if you have a question, 844-44-DR. Joe. So I teased you before, and I said, you know, people drink a lot of soda, and you say, Dr. Joe, I have to have my sodas every day. Uh, one of my uh, uh, DJs here in one of the stations that we work with, uh, she's wonderful. I, I, I'm just – I'm crazy about her. Uh, but every time I see her, she has – uh, two diet sodas in her hands and and she had breast cancer she's a breast cancer survivor and it, it just breaks my heart because this woman is so wonderful and she's drinking these diet sodas but one of the reasons why you have such a hard time giving up soda whether it's diet soda regular soda is that number one soft drinks contain many of them contain caffeine which is a mild diuretic so it makes you urinate so you eliminate water from your body but most sodas contain about 55 milligrams of salt And when you take in excess salt and you excrete water, what happens? You get thirsty. So the more soda you drink, the more soda you want to drink. 
because you're dehydrating yourself with the caffeine, and the phosphoric acid can cause problems too if it's a, a cola, and it has the salt in there. So one of the reasons why soda contains so much sugar is because it's to mask the taste of the salt. So this is a marketing tool, and it works very, very well. It's really hard to drink a soda because when you drink soda, you get thirsty, and that's where the problem comes in. And the other thing too is that sugar uh, separates and ionizes, and that's called a salt. Anything that dissolves in water can be called a salt. And so the sugar can actually make you thirsty, and the salt makes you thirsty, and that's why when you start drinking soda, you have such a tough time stopping. So it's a business strategy. It works if you're trying to sell soda. It works real well. Uh, if you're trying to get healthy, it's the exact opposite of that. It doesn't work very well. And sugar is so stimulating to the nucleus acumens. I'm going to talk about the pathway, how it goes in the brain in a little bit, that some studies show it's about eight times more addictive than cocaine because it travels along the same pleasure pathway. Now, I'm not sure that that's exactly correct eight times as addictive as cocaine, but once those pleasure centers are kicked in, you have a real tough time not wanting more pleasure. And that's why it's so hard to give up the sugar. So the main problem with sugar, particularly processed fructose, as we talked about, is the fact that it has very limited, we have very limited capacity to metabolize it. Again, we have to convert the fructose into glucose. You can safely metabolize about six teaspoons of added sugar per day. The average American consumes 22 teaspoons of sugar a day. So all that excess sugar is metabolized into body fat because the way it works is this. You put sugar in your body, it tries to get converted into glucose. Glucose is used as fuel in the cells. If the cells are all filled up with fuel, the cells say, I can't take any more fuel. We got to store this somewhere. So the body then sends it back to the liver and stores it as something called glycogen. Glycogen is a storage place for sugar. So if you run out of glucose, then the body uses glycogen. Once the glycogen stores are all filled up, the body then takes the sugar, sends it back to the liver, gets converted into triglycerides, which then gets stored as fat. So here's the thing. When you get your blood work done and the doctor says you have high triglycerides, think, what meal did you have a meal or two before having a blood work? If it was a high carbohydrate meal, chances are that's why your triglycerides were high. Glucose, fuel, glucose places were used up already. There's no, no more place to put the glucose. Converted into glycogen. Glycogen stores are all filled up, converted into triglycerides, which then gets stored as fat. This is why eating sugar makes you fat. And it's hard. And that's why I say you go on a low sugar diet, you might lose weight. You will, like the ketogenic diet. In fact, I'm, I'm putting together a whole thing on a ketogenic diet and why I'm not a fan of the ketogenic diet. Because one of the things it does, the ketones make you urinate. So you pee out a lot and you lose weight. So, uh, you know, uh, a, um, you, on the scale, you lose weight, but you're not going to lose weight in body fat mass. You will eventually. But a pound of uh, a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. So if you pee out a lot of water, you can lose eight pounds real quick. And so it's really something you've got to be careful with. With the, One of the things about the ketogenic diet, it puts a big strain on your kidneys, big strain on your liver, but it's also something uh, that can just dehydrate you. So I'm not a big fan of that either, just like we're talking about with sugar. So we talked about how sugar makes you gain weight. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the diseases related to sugar, the research from the Journal of the American Medical Association, and how just a few extra teaspoons of sugar can cause you to gain weight and increase your risk of heart disease. Boy, a lot, a lot, a lot of excitement on social media, a lot of calls coming in, uh, because everybody does it. You know, and it, it's, it's, if you were doing something like cocaine, we were just talking about that at the break there, uh, and coca leaves and chewing coca leaves. I don't know how we got down that path. Somehow we got down a rabbit hole there. Um, but if, if you were doing something that was illegal, as much as you do sugar, you will, you'd probably, oh my gosh, that's, that's very, very bad. You shouldn't do that. Maybe go to jail. But because sugar's legal, it, it becomes almost funny. And then what people laugh, right? Oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have that piece of cake. <laughs> and then they eat it. Oh, I shouldn't have that one more drink. <laughs> and then they do. Well, you know you're wrong. You're, you're laughing out of guilt. And the sugar is so bad for us because it causes so many problems. And if you just tuned in, uh, one research study said that 40% of our healthcare expenditure in this country is related to sugar, excess sugar intake. 40%. Holy cow. So we found the thing. I mean, you know, this new thing with vaping now, you know, a couple of people died from it. No, we got to pull vaping off the market. Well, I think they should pull vaping off the market. I'm not against that because it's horrible. But look at this 40% of our whole budget is related to sugar. Nobody's saying, let's pull sugar off the market. Can't do that. That'd be sacrilegious. So excess sugar, he said, metabolizes into fat. And it can, cause, it can lead to things like type 2 diabetes, which is insulin resistance. Too much sugar, the body produces insulin, 
Insulin then goes into the cells, opens up the cells. It's like a key, opens up the cells, allows sugar into the cells. And once the cells are all filled up, the cells say, I can't take any more sugar. I can't take it in the cell. It's going to gunk up the works. So what happens is the cells become resistant to the insulin, insulin resistance. And that's also known as type 2 diabetes. Cardiovascular disease linked to too much sugar, hypertension, high blood pressure, dementia, cancer. Cannot tell you how many patients come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I know someone who has dementia, or they may have dementia. And I've had people come in and say, listen, I've been diagnosed with dementia. I'm forgetting things. And before it gets too bad, I need your help. And so we put together a protocol for them from a nutrition standpoint. We do that with all our patients. And we recommend supplements. Of course, everybody, I think, should be on Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's the minimum amount of supplements you should be taking every day. If you're not willing to listen to anything else I say, at least take the Super Greens and the Essential Source because you got to get those nutrients into the body. And the biggest complaint I get, why didn't I do this sooner? Why have I not taken more? Su- why, what, why did I know about Super Greens and Essential Source five years, 10 years, 20 years ago? I don't know. But I couldn't imagine a day going by without at least taking Super Greens and Essential Source. There are two powders. I mix them together, mix it up with some coconut milk or almond milk, shake it up and drink it. Um, if, you, if you want to sweeten it up a little bit, maybe add a frozen banana to it, some berries. Uh, you can do what you like. Some people like the way it tastes. Some people want to make it a little sweeter, try some frozen bananas, whip it up, and make a smoothie. Uh, but that's the minimum supplement you should be taking every day. And then when we talk, to, talk about circulation to the brain, uh, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support opens up the blood vessels. B-complex, absolutely necessary for brain function. Vitamin D, the cheapest insurance policy you'll ever buy is vitamin D. And we, when the immune system gets weak, many times it's because the vitamin D is low, and most people have low vitamin D levels. So if it's not the summer season, from, you know, from fall into spring, I recommend Dr. Joe's vitamin D about 5,000 international units a day. That's five drops is all it is. It's so cheap. It's so amazing. And when you get the immune system working again, I'll tell you, life's going to be good. But you got to cut out the sugar because the sugar just blows out the immune system. According to a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, Americans get on average 350 calories a day from added sugar. This equates to about 22 teaspoons of sugar, and that's about 25% of the average American's daily caloric intake. 25% of the calories you're taking in is coming from not regular sugar found in fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, but in added sugar. So there's one study. People consume 21% or more of their daily calories in the form of sugar were twice as likely to die from heart disease as those who got 7% or less of their daily calories from sugar. Most of you are getting 22%. 21% is the cutoff for doubling your risk of heart disease. So here we have it. We have the thing. That's related to so many different problems. And I've been in hospitals and I've been in daycare centers and I've been in senior housing and I've been uh, in, in, in school lunch programs where they're giving these people sugar upon sugar upon sugar. And then they wonder why they have such high medical bills. They wonder why they have so many high dementia patients. They wonder why people are dying from all these diseases with modern medicine being what it is. The average life expectancy for a child in this generation, five years less than their parents. Five years shorter life expectancy. And I believe part of that is too much sugar because we didn't have this much sugar when I was a kid. The risk nearly tripled of heart disease among those who consume 25% or more of their daily calories from sugar. Again, that's most Americans. 10% of Americans consume added sugars at the triple risk level. So one out of 10 of you are at the triple, tripling your risk of heart disease just because of something stupid like eating sugar. Four grams of sugar is the equivalent to one teaspoon. So I recommend you cut your daily fructose intake to about 25 grams or less. And that includes eating fruit. So even with fruit, maybe two or three pieces of fruit a day. That's why super greens and essential source are so important because they have nutrients to help metabolize the sugar. And we take the sugar out when we use the fruit, we use fruit juices. We juice the fruit and take the sugar out. So you're getting all the benefits of the fruit without the sugar. I don't know how to make it easier for you. I wish I can come to each one of your houses and just say, here, take a scoop of Super Greens, take a scoop of Essential Source, mix it together, drink it every day. It takes about five seconds to do that every day. I can't imagine why you're not doing that. And all that's on the website, too, if you want to order at drjoe.com. And also, if you come to our offices, you can save the shipping costs. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And all the offices carry all the supplements. So uh, let's take a quick call before we go to break. Ed, how can we make your day better? Hey, good, Doc. How are you today? Very good. Go ahead. Real quick. Good. Good. 
I appreciate you taking the call. Okay, so look, just real quick. Um, I was having shoulder pain uh, for probably about a, a year now in my shoulders, you know, moving around, I guess, in the ball joints. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if I can give you the right, okay? So I was told to try doing um, and I, my coffee. I usually drink, like, coffee in the morning. has um, usually, like, with six raw sugars and, and with cream, right? Uh-huh. So somebody told me to go ahead and stop that. Uh, do a, a wheatgrass-based coffee right. uh, along with using collagen and stuff like that. So I've been doing that for uh, maybe since June, right? Okay. So my sh- I do feel better. Uh, I think all my joints do feel better. But I still want to I want to find out whether or not if, if the collagen and the wheatgrass-based yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, coffee yeah, yeah, is okay. Yeah. Well, what they're doing is coffee is such a strong acid, they're throwing in wheatgrass to try to alkalize the acids. Dr. Joe's Super okay. Greens is way, way stronger, and the wheatgrass is just part of that. So if you're going to do something, okay. do Super Greens an essential source. But if you're going to do coffee, I don't think you should. I want you to do organic coffee. And if you're going to okay. do collagen, okay. it has to be from an organic source. Absolutely, okay? Glad you're there having a fun time on social media here. If you don't follow us on social media, make sure you do that, uh, Facebook and Instagram. And we have a lot of fun things we cover on uh, social media. And we also, we did a live event a couple of weeks ago, hugely successful. Uh, we only were allowed to give out about 25 tickets. About 130 or 40 people wanted them. The good news is it looks like we're going to do another one coming up real soon, and we're going to have about triple the audience. So send us your email address. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. That's how we're going to let you know how you can get into the raffle. I want to go back to Sugar, but before that, we got to cover do this. Talking hands to toe with Dr. Joe. <laughs> Hey, folks, if you're, if you're new to the show, we do a segment now called Head to Toe with Dr. Joe Lewis, our intern, uh, put together that little segment for us. He also put in the opening you heard with Dr. Oz and everything. And Lewis uh, is getting creative again. We have another one coming up very soon, another another uh, intro song we have put together, and Lewis is going to do it. And Ahmad might even sing a little bit. Are you going to sing for us, Ahmad? What do you think? Are you going to sing for you us? You threw that out today, and I, um, I don't know about that. I think you can do it. Listen to the song. I you know, appreciate with, your confidence. Okay, yes. I, you have that nice, deep, manly voice. So we'll have <laughs> you do the manly part of it. So anyway, that's coming up soon. Uh, but anyway, uh, we do a segment. We cover a different part of the body each time uh, we do a show, and it's, it's called Head to Toe with Dr. Joe. And we're kind of in the gut area now, and we're going to talk about the small intestine. So what happens is you eat food, and your mouth produces saliva. And saliva has something in it called salivary amylase, and amylase breaks down carbohydrates. So when you chew your food, it's really important to chew your food because you've got to mix it with spit, to get the salivary amylase activated to start breaking down the sugars. Then it goes into your stomach, and your stomach has something, uh, hydrochloric acid activates pepsin and pepsinogen, and those are the things that break proteins, unravel them into something called amino acids. So protein is kind of like a ball of yarn, and it starts unraveling it. Then it passes from your stomach into your small intestine, and right at the beginning of your small intestine sits your pancreas. Now, we covered the pancreas a couple of weeks ago on on Head to Toe with Dr. Joe, and the pancreas releases enzymes, digestive enzymes, protease, amylase, and lipase, to break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So now it's doing its job, and then it goes into the small, it goes further down into the small intestine, and the gallbladder kicks in, and the gallbladder squirts out something called bile, which helps break down fat. So if you followed all that, carbohydrates, fats, and protein, what's called the macronutrients, have two places where they get broken down. Carbohydrates is the mouth and in, in, in the pancreas. Uh, proteins are the stomach and the pancreas. And fats are the pancreas and the gallbladder. So if you have your gallbladder removed, we did a show on that a while ago, uh, you got to be really careful the type of fats you eat and when you eat them and the concentration that you eat them in because you just can't break it down. And so this food now, if it's being down, broken down properly, goes into the small intestine. And in the small intestine, you have over 100 different types of bacteria. It's called the microbiome. And the microbiome are the bacteria. So put simply, what happens is you eat food and the bacteria break it down, spit out what they don't want, and that's what you absorb. So if you start wiping out the bacteria in your colon, killing off the microbiome, you've got a problem. And so many of you are killing off your microbiome every single day. One thing that'll kill it off is antibiotics. And now if you have to take antibiotics, absolutely take them. I'm not against antibiotics if you need them. However, you have to understand that if you take antibiotics, you need to take probiotics to replace the good bacteria that were killed. And on our website, drjoe.com, we have Dr. Joe's probiotics. It's a supplement. I take one every single day just to make sure, because I want to make sure I keep the the bacteria balanced in in good shape. If you start killing off the good bacteria, 
there's something in your colon that doesn't respond to antibiotics, and it's called yeast. And so the yeast in your colon can start to overgrow. And as the yeast starts to overgrow, it can burrow a hole into your colon and get into your blood system. And when it gets into the blood system, now you have what's called a systemic yeast infection. And then it can do things like cause toenail fungus, thrush in the mouth, vaginal infections, itchy rectum. Uh, all these are signs, skin fungus, these are all signs of, a, of imbalance of the yeast in your body. And trying to kill off yeast in the body is really tough. So here's a test I want you to do. I want you to get a clear glass of water, put it next to your bed. Now tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow morning when you wake up, get a big mouthful of spit, scrape your tongue with your teeth, and spit into the glass. Wait up to an hour. And if at any time from the time you spit to an hour later, you start to see these little tentacles come down off the spit, that could be a sign of a systemic yeast infection. And we can do more testing at our office if you want to. We can do blood work on you. We can do a micronutrient test. And part of that is a yeast test and find out if you do have a yeast infection. If you do, we really need to work on that really hard. And the number one thing you can do that you have to do if you have a yeast infection, you got to cut out the processed sugar. That's the breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, added sugar, because the sugar feeds the yeast. And if you're taking antibiotics, you got to be careful with those to make sure you're taking Dr. Joe's probiotics. We also have probiotics in Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source because they're so important. And uh, if, if you're not doing anything else, we said this earlier, at least you should be taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. It's the minimum amount of nutrients you need every single day. And they're two powders. Uh, they're on the website, drjoe.com, along with all the other supplements. And if you pick them up at our offices, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, you can make an appointment to come see us for chiropractic care. And if you pick up the supplements, you save shipping, which is another, save you a couple of bucks. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. A lot more to talk about sugar. We're going to talk about sugar and cancer when we come back. If you have any healthcare questions, lines are open. 844-44-DR-JOE. Petition. Can you say overachiever? Dr. Joe Esposito on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. Talking about sugar today, and it's an important topic. Uh, obviously, we're getting tons of calls. Social media is lighting up uh, because everybody does it. And everybody giggles at heat, sugar, heat. You know it's bad, but it's so bad. And the statistic I opened the show with is that 40% of our healthcare costs in this country are related to excess intake of sugar. 40%, holy cow. Folks, we found the cure. If we had everybody getting chiropractic care, which is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pains by far. So chiropractic care is our portal of entry when it comes to treatment. When it comes to nutrition, see people like myself who really know their nutrition and get you on good products, get people off the sugar. Guess what? We just totally removed this whole healthcare crisis that we're going through. It's done. Because A, people aren't going to get as sick as they should as they are now. And B, we have inexpensive treatments to get them well. Why wouldn't you do this? I have patients every day. I wish I'd come to you sooner, Dr. Joe. I'm putting my life in your hands, Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe, I've tried everything. You're my last hope. If I had just a nickel for every time I heard that, I'd have a lot of nickels. You're our last hope. We don't know what else to do. You should have started here to begin with. And so if you do have a health care problem, I want you to consider starting with us. Now, I know the show goes all over the world. We're interna internationally syndicated. But we can do phone consultations if you want to do a phone consultation on your, on your health and wellness. But if you can get to the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to see you as a patient. Patients fly in from all over the world to see us. And we can hopefully get to the cause of your problem and not just treat the symptoms. And if you've ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. No one is stronger than their car. So if the car was damaged, you were damaged, you need to get to see us right away. And we have patients come in all the time. Dr. Joe, I got in an accident. I heard you say that, and I just want you to check me out. And we check them out, and 100% of the time we find problems. And they say, but I didn't have a lot of pain. But boy, when I saw that x-ray, when you pushed on my neck and I felt that pain, boy, were you right. So trust me. So everyone that's been in a car accident ever, you need to come see us right away. It's really important. But just come see us and get well. And you, you know, don't be like so many patients that are angry that they didn't come see us. I got to cover sugar and cancer. We're going to take a caller first. If you have any questions, 844-44-DR-JOE, D-R-J-O-E. Gail, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. I really appreciate you taking my call. Um, I, sugar is not my deal. Like, I don't crave sugar because I cut it out. I tried to cut it out a while ago, but um, I do like to drink seltzer water instead sure. of water. Uh -huh. Is that an issue? Uh, not really. 
Uh, seltzer water is slightly acidic. That's why if you have a stain on your shirt or something, you can put seltzer water on it and it breaks it down. It removes the stain. It's slightly acidic. But if that's your biggest sin, I'm okay with this. I'm going to give you a okay. special dispensation. I'm Italian. I can do that. Um, special uh, well, dispensation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do um, I have had some joint pain, and yes. uh, the doctor said it might be a buildup of that uric acid. So maybe it was drinking too many of those seltzer waters. Yeah, so. and if, you, if you could buy one of the machines that you make the seltzer yourself, because if you buy it in a can— it's a mild acid. It, can, it probably is leaching something from the can. I don't know if there's been studies on that done, but uh, if you can make it yourself each time, those things are a little expensive, anyway, $60, $70, but if you're going to drink a lot of seltzer, just make it every time. It's going to be a lot cheaper for you, and don't store it in plastic Good either. advice. Yeah, do that. Um, but if you do, okay. but uh, if you are having joint pain, you might want to consider chiropractic care because that's the most, ex- most effective, least expensive treatment for that. And then when you come in, we can also do a nutritional evaluation and see what else we can do. But in the meantime, super green is an essential source. Absolutely, everyone needs that. That's the minimum supplements. And then you might want to consider Dr. Joe's nitric oxide, which opens up the blood vessels okay. and increases circulations. A lot of people get good results with that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure, Gail. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, folks, I only have two more segments after this. 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. That number rings throughout our offices when we're not on the air. So during business hours, you can call to make an appointment, 844-44-DR-JOE. You can make an appointment online if you want, but it's easier if you call because we can explain everything to you, and this way everything's clear. So we're talking about sugar, and if you're among the 80% of people that are insulin or leptin resistant— and we talked about insulin resistance, where you eat sugar, the body releases insulin, insulin goes into the cells, opens up the cells, and lets the sugar in. And if you eat too much sugar, the body becomes resistant to insulin working because the cells don't want any more sugar. They got enough. That's called insulin resistance. Leptin resistance is when the brain, the hypothalamus in the brain, is being affected by something called leptin. Leptin is produced in your fat cells, and it's produced in your stomach. And it goes up into the brain, it goes into the hypothalamus, and it tells the hypothalamus that you're full. So if you're overweight, and I used to be fat, so I can say the F word. I used to be fat. So if you're fat, you're producing leptin on a regular basis. Leptin goes into the hypothalamus and says, hey, I'm full. Over time, the hypothalamus doesn't believe you anymore. It says, listen, you keep telling me you're full, you're full, you're full. I don't believe that. So it becomes leptin resistant. And this is why when you're overweight, you want to keep eating. Because you don't feel full no matter how much you eat. Well, not eventually you feel full. But you don't feel full with a normal amount of food because your brain is leptin resistant. So as we lose the fat, we lose the production of leptin. So now the brain becomes more sensitive to, to, to leptin. And so it starts to listen to it again. So losing weight is so important. And sugar, we talked about how sugar converts into triglycerides, which then gets stored as fat. And then produces leptin, which then makes you not feel full, and so you want to eat more. And what do you want to eat more of? Sugar, because sh- sugar stimulates the nucleus acubens in your brain, and you get high. It releases dopamine. So you're getting stoned from the sugar. You're not, you don't feel like you have enough food in your body. So the one way to stop this is to give your body super high concentration of nutrition. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. And I hear this almost every day from people that take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They say, I can't afford not to take this because I eat so much less food when I'm taking the Super Greens and the Essential Source because the body wants nutrients. And then your hypothalamus starts to go back to normal again. So again, the minimum supplements you should be taking every day are Super Greens and Essential Source. And Sierra, one of our producers, she's not here today, but one of our producers said something a while ago that was really profound. She said, it's okay to be hungry. It's just a little discomfort. That's all it is. So it's okay to get a little hungry every now and then. It's not the end of the world. Deal with it. And when you start to go into what we call intermittent fasting, which means you skip one meal a day. Now, if you can do that at least two or three times a week, that's a wonderful start. So what you do is maybe have a late lunch, maybe two, three o'clock, and then just skip dinner. And then the first eight hours, you're digesting your meal. The next eight hours, you become a fat-burning machine. And as we start to wear off the fat in the body and the fat starts to drop, the brain starts working better because it's not getting so much leptin. And then you, when you're hungry, you're craving the sugar because the sugar feeds the, 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 the pleasure centers in the brain. And so that's an easy way to cut out the sugar is just eat high concentration of nutrients and then skip a meal every now and then. I like to skip dinner. I like to have breakfast. I like to wake up to super greens and essential source every day. Uh, and I like to have breakfast. So my easiest thing to do is I just skip dinner. But if you can do that, you'll be very happy. I guess I lied to you. When we come back, we're going to talk about sugar and cancer. 
uh, and the research that was done. And uh, even back in, there was a Nobel Prize awarded in 1934 for the research on this. So, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. If you have any healthcare questions, only two more segments left to the show, 844-44-DR-JOE. If you have questions, you can always send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Gosh, so much to cover in only two more segments. Gosh. If you have any questions, 844-44-DR-JOE. Got to talk about sugar and cancer. Uh, this drives me nuts. And, and, and Lewis and I were talking uh, at, at the break. Lewis is uh, one, of our, uh, one of the joe it -alls. And um, he was talking about in hospitals how they have uh, hamburger joints as a cafeteria food. And the people go down and have these, these, these grilled hamburgers on white bread with French fries and milkshakes. And it's a hospital. My gosh, folks, I don't get why hospitals don't get this. They're notorious for being ignorant about the metabolic damage associated with things like sugars and processed foods. I, 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 a famous man said, forgive them for they know not what they do. These are researchers that know this stuff. Why would they put these in the hospitals? I have no idea. But even cancer hospitals serving up high, high processed, high carbohydrate foods to their patients, despite the fact the science is clear and it shows that sugar feeds cancer. Now cancer cells need glucose, sugar to thrive and carbohydrates turn into glucose in your body. So in order to starve your cancer cells, you have to eliminate its primary source of fuel, which is sugar, which include all non-vegetable carbohydrates. Otto Warburg actually received the Nobel Prize in 1934 for his research on cancer cell physiology, which clearly demonstrated cancer cells require more sugar to thrive. Unfortunately, most doctors don't ever address this, and I don't know why. It's obvious. The research is clear. Uh, World Health Organization, World Cancer Report, um, predicts worldwide cancer rates to rise by 57% in the next two decades. But the report also notes that half of all cancers are preventable and can be avoided if, if the current medical knowledge is acted upon. We don't need more research. We just need to act upon what we have. Yes, new research is great, but, you know, we have all these cancer drives and everything. And I support that. That's wonderful. But let's implement what we have. And if we do that, hopefully we're going to knock out a lot of those cancer patients. I firmly believe that reducing sugar and processed food consumption is part of the long-term answer. Even in terms of treatment, cancer has been shown to respond to diet alone. If you go to a low-carb diet, which is high, which is high in uh, uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, cut, fruit being limited somewhat, cut out the processed sugar, it's been shown to help reverse many types of cancers. And a lot of very exciting research is being done on this. So we don't need more research. We just need to keep do the research that we have. It can be very useful in addressing the underlying insulin resistance. We talked about that where the cells can't take any more insulin. Once the insulin resist resistance is, is resolved, then you don't have to worry about things like the ketogenic diet anymore. Again, the ketogenic diet is a diet. It's not a lifestyle. I don't, it's, not, it's hard to maintain for long term. And the research now is showing it's putting strain on the kidneys and it's putting strain on the liver and it may not be something that you want to do. I'm not a big fan of it. I, yeah, I agree with cutting out processed foods and cutting out the sugars, but I don't think we need all the other things that go along with that, especially the animal proteins that go along with that. Now, oncologists uh, surely have to start paying attention to this issue. Uh, it's it's science-based medicine. Uh, there's no question about it. And if you don't have cancer yet, you're eating a lot of sugar, you could be setting yourself up for it as part of a protocol. You know, people say all the time, we have a product now, Doctor, it's a CBD oil, it's called Dr. Joe's Hemp Oil. And it has CBD in it, and it has other cannabinoids in it. We did a show on it last week or the week before, and people are all excited about it, it's wonderful. And they say, can it cure, and fill in the blank. The answer is no. We don't promise cures for anything. What we promise is that you do the things that your body needs, and the chances are you're gonna get better. So cutting back sugar is part of a protocol. And that protocol would consist of eating a diet consisting mostly of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. About 60% of your diet raw so that you get the enzymes. Whenever you cook anything above 110 degrees, you start to kill the nutrients. So raw food is so important. When I say raw, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, salad, it just throw a, one meal a day should be a salad. How about that? It's real simple. Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, part of the protocol. Minimum supplements you need every day. Make sure you get your vitamin D. We have Dr. Joe's vitamin D on the website as well, drjoe.com. If I eat a cooked meal, I eat Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes because Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes help break down the food. And if you're over 30 years old, chances are you probably need to be taking digestive enzymes as well when you eat cooked foods. 
Uh, Dr. Joe's omega-3, we talked about that at the break. Garrett and I were talking about that. Uh, algae source omega-3, the purest form of omega-3 oils in the world are the algae source, and that's what we put in Dr. Joe's omega-3s. And that's good for brain function, and that's good for uh, anti-inflammatories, and we're finding omega-3s are so important for so many different things. And as a chiropractor, I want to get you well and keep you well. And so if I can give you the best chiropractic care available, I can, can't promise that, but I like to think my doctors are some of the best in the world. And then we add a good diet to bring down the inflammation. And then if you have acid reflux or heartburn, we can actually adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm so that you can start digesting your food more efficiently. Now you have a plan. And this plan works really well. Trust me, I've been fine-tuning it for decades now. And it's the protocol that works best. And the problem, the only problems we really ever see with patients is when they don't follow our care plan. And they don't do everything we say. It's not hard. It's only the average treatment plan in our office is about eight weeks. And if you do everything we say for eight weeks, I always say, let me own you for eight weeks. Do everything I say. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? I lied. But I'm not lying. And then you see the results and you'll say, why didn't I do this sooner? It was the most effective, least expensive thing I could have done to get well and stay well. And that's why we have to have chiropractic care as a portal of entry treatment. Not as I tried everything else. Let me go to the chiropractor as my last resort. Let's do it the other way around. Let's go chiropractic first, drug second, surgery last. All the doctors I know, I've had doctors on this show, orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, everyone agrees that should be the protocol. So now you got to follow it. It's real simple. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. You can go to our website, drjoe.com. That's the Atlanta area. And you can do it right online. But better yet, call us. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, D-R-J-O-E. And you can book an appointment. Uh, the staff will explain everything to you, how we accept most insurances, how we work with insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. If you're ever in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged, you've got to get in to see us. So I know I'm, I'm on a soapbox today, but I'm going off here on sugar and cancer because the, the Journal of Clinical Investigations in January, sugar also appears to initiate cancer growth. So you, if you eat a lot of sugar, it can initiate cancer growth. And when you cut off the food supply, the sugar supply, it can reverse toward precancerous structure and function in cells. So you got to cut out sugar for a million different reasons. That's just one of them. But you want to cut out the amount of sugar you personally add to your foods and drinks. So that's easy. You can use something called stevia. Um, there's a supplement we have at our office. It's not on the website, um, but it's um, uh, we have it at the office. If you call the office, we'll get it for you. It's called Gymnema. Now, Gymnema helps stabilize your blood sugar. And if you have sugar cravings and you just can't stop yourself, how many people have that? Raise your hands. A lot of you. Get some of the Gymnema. Call the office, 844-44-DR-JOE. And I want you to take one of the tablets and chew it before you eat something sweet. And it numbs the sugar taste buds. Now, chewing it, it doesn't taste good, but that's not why I'm having you do it. And then try eating something sweet. It has no flavor. And then you say, okay, I have to have this piece of cake. Let me chew a Gymnema tablet first. And when you take the bite of cake, you're going to go, it has no flavor. Eh, I don't really need it anymore. And it's amazing how that Gymnema works. It's so cool. Show. We still have one more segment. But this show is going to be on the website tomorrow, drjoe.com, along with over 1,000 hours of podcasts. And listen, we have a live event coming up real soon. Uh, we did one a couple of weeks ago. A lot of you got a little angry because we only picked uh, 20. We only had room for 20 people and their guests to come see us. This one's going to be about double or triple that. So make sure, if you haven't done it yet, send us your email address to the website, drjoe.com. It says contact us. Just send us your email address. We'll put you on our list. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram uh, because it's going to be in about three weeks, and we're going to have to pick a lot of people to come. So uh, make sure you know about it. We're going to let everybody know as soon as we know the date and uh, the process of getting the tickets. But it's a lot of fun. The live event was just a blast last time. You don't want to miss this one um, because it's so much fun. And hopefully we'll have free food there too. Um, last time we did, but now my boss is like, oh, if you're going to have three times the amount of people, that's a lot of money. So um, if you have a restaurant, you want to get a lot of promotion, you can always you know, sponsor our, our, uh, our, our live event. Give you lots of, lots, of, lots of promotion. Don't tell the boss that, though. He'll, he'll yell at me for offering that. All right, so we're talking about sh food and sugars, and you got to cut out the sugar. So cut back the amount of sugar you add to your food. Using things like stevia or something called Lohan, L-O-H-A-N, those are fine. Do not use artificial sweetener. That would be aspartame, uh, saccharin, sucralose. We've done many, many shows on that. We're going to do a whole show on artificial sweeteners coming up. But do not use artificial sweeteners. Of all the things I can teach you, the worst thing you can put in your body is the artificial sweeteners. So we really got to get you off those. But research coming out of some of America's most respected, respected institutions confirms 
Sugar is the primary dietary factor driving chronic disease development. If we had to pick one thing for chronic disease control, it would be cutting back on the sugar. So far, scientific studies have linked excessive fructose consumption to about 78 different diseases. So when you have this information, this puts you in a driver's seat when it comes to prevention. So as a general rule, a diet that promotes health is very, very low in sugar and is high in things like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Now I say fruits, about two or three pieces a day or servings a day, but a lot of vegetables. That's what you're looking for. And what's gonna happen is this, I promise you, I've been doing this for thousands, probably tens of thousands of people over the years. What's gonna happen is once you start cutting out the bad foods and you start eating the good foods, you'll wonder how you survived as long as you did. I look at people every day, I'm just amazed that this sack of flesh that we are survives on the crap that people put in their bodies. And I am just fascinated that the body is even above ground. And many times it's not, unfortunately. And so if you wanna get well, it's not hard. Three things you have to have, a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. That's the protocol that I recommend for people to get well and stay well. The nervous system is us, chiropractors. So come see us and we'll get that taken care of for you. Check the spine, all 206 bones, make sure they're working. Uh, you also want to make sure that the digestive system is working. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, these are symptoms and they're very serious symptoms. Many times we need to adjust or pull the stomach away from the diaphragm so the whole digestive system relaxes and you're able to digest your food. And I tell you what, from a chiropractic standpoint and fixing not only spines but digestive system, people want to name their kids after you. Because like, oh my gosh, I suffered for so long. We just had a caller that didn't want to go on the air. We took him off the air. And his, he said his wife's in severe pain. How long has she been in pain? Eight years. Okay, get her to see us tomorrow. Why is she suffering that long? I don't understand it. And it really solves the problem of what do I do? First step is come see us. So cutting out the sugar and cutting out all the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, this is where you have control. But a new thing that's popping up and when I went to school, it wasn't so big, uh, but now it is, it's called non-alcoholic fatty liver. There was a study out of the University of Sydney um, and, in Australia, and non-alcoholic fatty liver is now present in between 17 and 33% of Americans. One in three people have non-alcoholic fatty liver. Now, when I went to school, if somebody had fatty liver, the answer was cause is alcohol. That's it, it's real simple. Now it's fructose, it's high fructose corn syrup. Growing percentage parallels the frequency of, of the non-alcoholic fatty liver with obesity, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes. And many Americans with this disease don't experience any symptoms. That's where the problem comes in. When you become a patient in our office, I'd say there's two phases of care. Phase one is let's get you out of pain. That's the easy part in most cases. Phase two is stabilize the spine. And that's the hard part because you have no symptoms. I feel great. What do I got to go back there for? Because we got to get to the cause and fix that cause. And with non-alcoholic fatty liver, many times there's no uh, symptoms until you start getting later on, and then you start getting some real serious issues. We talked about the microbiome, the bacteria in your colon. It's so important because the bacteria is now we're finding talking to the brain. So the brain and the bacteria in your colon have communications. And one way they do it is along something called the vagus nerve. You've heard me talk about the vagus nerve in the past. The vagus nerve controls your digestive system. And so if the digestive system is out of whack, it can send messages up the vagus nerve telling the brain, hey, something's wrong. And one of the things the vagus nerve does, it also has some control over the heart. So many times if somebody has atrial fibrillation, a rapid heart rate, they're skipping a beat with their heart, it's a digestive problem. And we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm and fix the digestive system, the vagus nerve starts carrying nor normal neurological impulses, and a lot of times that helps the heart rate and even high blood pressure. So it's really cool when you start seeing how it all works and it all ties together. It's the nervous system, digestive system, and the diet. And if you eat a lot of sugar, you can create something called leaky gut syndrome. What happens is excess sugar causes an inflammatory reaction in the gut. And in some places in your gut, the, the small intestine is only one cell thick. So if you get little tears in this gut, in your small intestine, undigested particles of food, fecal material, bacteria can get absorbed into the blood system. And the blood system now, the, the immune system has to attack these foreign bodies. And when they attack it, it causes an inflammatory reaction. And that inflammation doesn't only stay in the gut, it can go through the whole body. And that inflammation can even get into the brain. So many times when there's brain fog, when there's anxiety, it's a gut issue. 
depression, ADD, ADHD, focusing issues. Many times when we fix the patient's gut, the brain starts to work normally again. And in 2013, there was a study published. Uh, they found 150 calories of sugar per person uh, consumed a day. That's not a lot. That's about one can of soda. Can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. And uh, increased risks are true even if the person is eating a good diet. If they're sedentary, just the sugar alone can increase your risk of diabetes. So it's really s sad that we have all these problems and we have the answers. That's it? Oh, i got so much more to cover.